Welcome scholars. In this video we're going to talk about heat engines. You should take notes in your concept catalog. A heat engine is a device that converts heat to work. It takes heat from a high temperature area and releases heat to a lower temperature area. One example we saw in class is Hero's engine, where the heat it takes in is from the burning flame. And it puts out heat to the lower temperature area, which is the surrounding room. Some heat is always released, making it impossible to convert all incoming heat to work. In other words, you can never make a heat engine that's 100% efficient. If you think about the Hero's engine, there was some uh, heat in the exhaust, and without that heat coming out as the exhaust, it would not have had the turning power that it did. This is a diagram of a heat engine. You should make this diagram in your notes. It's showing how you have heat coming in from some external heat source. It could be fuel that you're burning. It could be some hot water somewhere and some of that heat's doing work and the rest of the energy is going out as waste heat. So we have this equation W equals QH minus QL. You should definitely put this equation underneath your definition for a heat engine and units underneath it is all in joules or it could be calories or any unit for energy. Some examples of heat engines we have gasoline engines in cars, steam engines, they um, we think of those as being part of old trains, but nowadays they're actually the, um, the most important part of our modern electric power plants, which burn some kind of fuel. Usually it's coal back east, around here it's natural gas. And you heat up water, it turns into steam. That high pressure steam it gets forced through a turbine, which is kind of like fan blades, and that turns a generator to make electricity. So those, those are really common. In fact, if you think about China right now, building so many more, so many new coal-fired power plants, they're using steam engines inside. So here's a little video of an internal combustion car. Um, I don't have a good way of doing it in slow motion, but I'm going to give you the link you can play around with it, or we'll look at combustion engines more in school or in class tomorrow. But basically, this is showing how you have different components of your engine. I'm just going to scroll through some of these here. Um, here's your what you might call the engine block and all these different components coming in your valves and different gearings pretty complicated machinery no doubt and in the end as far as the functionality of it goes you can see right here it is a four it's a four cylinder engine it's got four pistons these are going up inside up and down inside of a cylinder which they're not showing us the cylinder walls but um, you see these valves that move up here at the top. As those valves move, they're either allowing fresh fuel to come in or um, burn fuel to go out as exhaust. And if we go a little bit forward here, yeah, we can see in this video here, let's just play it for a little bit. When you see the blue coming in, that's the uh, air fuel mixture, and it's coming in from that fuel injector in the top right. And um, first the fuel-air mixture gets compressed, and that actually starts heating it up. And then you have a little tiny spark from the spark plug, and that makes it explode. And exploding, it pushes the piston down with great force. And on the next stroke, the piston comes back up and pushes the exhaust gases, which are now hot, out of the car. So this is a continuous cycle. We call this a four-stroke engine because energy is coming in. Uh, I'm sorry, fuel is coming in. You have intake then you have compression, then you have power from the spark plug, and then you have exhaust stroke. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, in class, or you can check out page, I think it's 348 in your book. So, this is probably the most important engine that we use every day because it's part of our cars. Yeah, check out page 348 for more of a breakdown. Let's do an example. A car engine takes in 4,000 joules of heat from burning gasoline and puts out 2,500 joules as waste heat during each cycle. A, how much work does it do each cycle? And um, this is, uh, you should copy this example in your notes. And let's take a look at how we can work through the solution. So let's see, I'm gonna circle 4,000 joules, that looks important. And that's uh, Q, because it's heat. I also see 2,500 uh, joules. I'm going to write that down because it's probably part of the calculation I'll need to do. I have two Qs, so now I need to think about how I distinguish between them. We have Q that takes in, so that's 
heat coming in, we're going to call that H because the heat coming in is always more than the heat going out. So we'll call that QL, the other one. And that's the waste heat. How much work was done? Work equals question mark. So we can use our equation W work equals QH minus QL. Very, very simple math. Just arithmetic, really. Subtracting 4,000 minus 2,500 is 1,500 joules. This is how much work is being done each cycle. Uh, in part B, we're going to take a look at um, in 10 cycles. We've, so the one that we just saw had um, you know, the video that we just saw showed an engine going through continuous cycles. And you might even call each of those um, cycles one RPM, one rotation of the motor. And uh, if you've ever looked at a, a, at a tachometer in your car, that's the, um, the dial that shows how fast the engine is turning. It has units of RPM, and that's showing how fast the engine is um, rotating. So when we talk about per cycle, you should recognize that the engine is doing literally like a thousand or more cycles every minute. As you're driving down the freeway, typically your car is ro your engine's rotating at about 3,000 RPM. Uh, depends on how your gears are set up. So in 10 cycles, we just take that last answer and we multiply it. And that should be in green. We multiply it um, by 10. And we get 15,000 joules. All right, so the next topic in this is waste heat. We're never going to be able to get all that energy from the incoming the incoming heat into, into work. You always have some waste heat or even not just some but a lot of waste heat going out. So think about this is to these two pistons. You have gas molecules inside. Which diagram shows the likely arrangement of gas molecules pushing a piston? And which one would be better and why? From the FET lab you can probably recognize that the one that's more realistic is the one on the bottom right. And it would be ideal, however, if you could achieve what's happening in the top left, where every one of these gas molecules is going to be hitting the piston, pushing the piston, making the car go. But unfortunately, it's not like that. If you look at this picture, you see many of these are heading towards the cylinder walls. And when they do that, when they collide with a molecule of the cylinder wall, they're going to give up some of their energy. It's just the basic collision. You can think of it like, you know, a momentum collision. So the... the um, the gas molecules are going to lose some heat, and the wall, cylinder wall molecules are going to gain heat. Over time, over actually just a matter of a couple minutes, if you didn't have some way of removing that heat that's building up in these walls, the engine would, um, would overheat. And that can be a really bad problem because the metal can get so hot that it actually all fuses together, and now you have one big chunk of metal that's completely useless. Your car is totally toast. At least your engine's toast. You could have, you could have a new engine put in. Um, so, the, um, this is most probable, but the problem is that you're never going to be able to get 100% efficiency. On the top left, this would represent 100% efficiency, but it's impossible to achieve. This represents um, much less efficiency. Most of it, the energy is going into heat. These are some typical efficiencies for engines. Uh, let's take a look at a gasoline engine in a car. Now I say this is EF efficiency, calculated maximum values, and it says 0 0.60. We should recognize that that is 60%. Um, Just all these are, you can convert to a percent. That is maximum. That's just based on what the theory of thermodynamics says you could possibly um, achieve. And basically, um, uh, it, it comes down to the difference in temperature between how hot the engine is compared to how cool the surroundings are. The hotter you can run your engine, the more efficient it becomes. And it actually should make a lot of sense because the hotter we make our engine, when I say that, I'm talking about the walls of the cylinder, the hotter we get them, the less energy is given up by the molecules inside. So a molecule hitting hot walls of a cylinder will bounce off with more energy than they had if the walls were cool. And if you want to think about when is your car most operating most efficiently, when is it converting most of its energy into, um, into work, it's when the car is already heated up. Because before that, a lot of the energy from the burning fuel is going into um, heating up the walls of the cylinder as opposed to going into pushing the piston. 
So back to these values. Measured values are much lower. For a gasoline engine, 25% efficiency. Steam engines, only 17%. Diesel engines are more efficient, as you can see here. They have some advantages that we can talk about in class. And how do we calculate engine efficiency? Let's spend a moment talking about that. We can define it as what you get out divided by what you have to put in. And this would be a good thing to add to your concept catalog. For an equation, efficiency, capital E, you might put a capital E after efficiency. Actually, that can be confusing because capital E can also be energy. Uh, maybe you want to use EFF. Equals the work that you get out divided by the heat that you have to put in. If something was 100% efficient, then you could put in 100 joules of heat and get out 100 joules of work. And 100 over 100 is 1, or 100%. We can substitute work as QH minus QL. That's from our equation just a few minutes ago. And now we can do QH over QH, which is 1, minus QL over QH, which is right here, QL over QH. So that's how we can be calculated. Let's do an example problem. What is the efficiency of a diesel engine that uses 400 joules of heat to do 100 joules of work during each cycle of the engine? So we can do the math here. It's Again, it's pretty straightforward here. Efficiency equals the work done divided by the heat in. The work done is 100 joules. The work the heat that we had, sorry, the work done is 100 joules. The heat we had to put in is 400 joules. 100 divided by 400 is 0 0.25 which is 25 percent. You can recognize that this is a dimensionless quantity because the joules cancel and so it's just a number. 